Welcome to Impacting Jamaica, where we shine the spotlight on the many but often ignored positive happenings, activities, projects and investments at every level across every sector to inspire, motivate and excite people everywhere. Impacting Jamaica is powered by the Philip and Christine Gore Family Foundation, the Jamaica Public Service Company, Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited, Red Stripe, Kyramed and Proven Investments Limited. Thank you for joining Impacting Jamaica. I'm Tamika Gordon. I'm speaking with Dr. Andre Williams, an integrated oncologist and founder of Teshuva Wellness. Dr. Williams believes the body was built to heal itself and employs this belief and his wealth of experience in guiding his patients toward regaining their good health. He is sharing with us a little of what he does and the journey of how he got to be in this field. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for joining us on Impacting Jamaica. Hi, thank you so much, Tamika. It's a pleasure to be able to share. Great. All right. I would like to start by asking you um, what integrated oncology is and hmm. how it differs, if so, from what we know about oncology. Absolutely. So oncology, as you know, is this study of cancer. And for, for decades now, probably since the 1960s or 70s, people have associated the word oncology with chemotherapy and radiation, because that's the majority of the work that has been done in terms of research and treatment options. In addition to that, uh, immunotherapy is a new wave of treatment option uh, possibilities for someone with cancer. However, as a, as a Christian, I am of the belief that God built our bodies to heal themselves. And I'm also of the belief that there are options available in the realm of the naturopathic domain that are suitable for the treatment of cancer as well as other diseases. So as a part of the journey I've been on over the past several years, I have found a way to take the best of both worlds whether it is a con so-called conventional world of chemotherapy and radiation, or it is the naturopathic world of looking at the food that we eat, possible of uh, toxins that are involved in our development of diseases, using herbs and other uh, natural supplements to help us to heal. And we take the best of both worlds and make them suitable for the patient sitting in front of me, rather than just pigeonholing a patient to either go natural or go conventional. Interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm also curious to find out what the word teshuva means and how <laughs> this relates to your practice. Absolutely. So teshuva means to return to your best self, but in Hebrew, a better way of translating it is it means to return to God. And as a Christian myself, I believe that God is the source of all wellness. And it's a return to, depending on how you want to view it, a return to God, whatever that looks like for you as a listener, or a return to the best possible version of yourself. And that's what we seek to do for each and every person that comes through the door at Teshuva Wellness. Mm -hmm. So did you always want to be a doctor? Were there any other fields that were of interest to you? So interestingly enough, I kind of knew early in life that I was going to become a doctor. Certainly at high school, I went to the great Campion College. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had to make the decision as early as fourth form, whether you wanted to go sciences or otherwise. And I'd always had a healthy interest in the sciences. So it was a natural progression uh, through fifth form, CXC, onto sixth form, and eventually into medical school. And um, it has been a blast of a journey. I didn't realize I was on it at first, uh, but I'm sure you're going to ask me, so I'll jump right ahead to saying that my path as an oncologist, having finished medical school, was pretty certain I had uh, assumed the role of one of the head oncologists at a hospital here in Jamaica. And the plan was simple to just continue to grow and grow my practice, grow within the public system and to treat as many patients as possible with all this knowledge I'd accumulated through my postgraduate training. However, at some point, I started to realize that the patients weren't terribly interested in chemotherapy or radiation, as I'm sure you probably guessed. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't bad enough, 
some of the patients actually started to work on themselves using home remedies. And I found that some of them were actually getting better. So this went against my you know, previous knowledge or understanding that, okay, the only way to treat this cancer thing is via chemotherapy, radiation, or immunotherapy, and everything else is unproven and unlikely to help. And so I had several patients in front of me totally disproving everything I had previously believed, recovering from stage four cancers in some cases. And so it prompted my curiosity. I began to pay my way to go to conferences overseas and workshops to learn what other countries had made available to their uh, population for treating cancer and other illnesses. I ended up winning an award as a result of that. I uh, got an award from the American Society of Clinical Oncology for my work in a developing country. And the rest, as I say, is history. I've just continued on that pursuit of looking at other ways to treat this so-called deadly illness and to make those healing options available to Jamaicans and people who visit the country. I, I meant to ask as well about that award and what the work entailed. Tell me yes. about that experience. <laughs> so it's a funny, it's a funny story because um, as I said, I was I was destined to just continue with chemotherapy and radiation for the rest of my career. And ironically enough, I had been visiting the American Society of Clinical Oncology conferences for years. Of course, that's where all the top oncologists from around the world come to present and exchange information. <laughs> but funnily enough, it wasn't until I started to look outside of the box <laughs> that I um, was given that award because they recognized that I was trying to pioneer new options mm -hmm. in what they consider to be a low resource environment and to, to an extent they're quite correct um, most Jamaicans are not able to afford certainly immunotherapy which costs thousands of us per dose mm -hmm. um, and so they recognize what I probably had not yet realized that I was pioneering something new different and innovative for this region and I'm, I'm grateful that I made that step because now I'm able to treat Sometimes even beyond cancer, because the principles, Tamika, are more or less the same, whether you're treating cancer or um, another degenerate, what we call degenerative disease, such as arthritis, autoimmune illness, diabetes, hypertension. Um, what I like to tell my patients is that the body is in a state of dis-ease. And it's that dis-ease that we need to find the root of, find out what it is that's causing the body to be imbalanced or in a state of dis-ease and I find that once I'm able to sharpen my ability to find that that's the source of that problem in that particular patient then treatment becomes a lot more comprehensive the options available to treat a patient means that I could see you today with an illness and then see your best friend the next day with the same illness and both of you walk away with two totally different treatments Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the field that you were pioneering in and that level of innovation that you were putting, can you, you know, give us a little bit more details of what the treatment itself entailed? Um, so, you know, so, the, so we know exactly what it is. Certainly, certainly. So I've trained with some of the top doctors from Germany, um, Italy and the United States. And I, I want to, first of all, point out that I, like most doctors, thought that so-called alternative medicine was largely unresearched and unproven. Mm -hmm. But as I began to train with these doctors from around the world, certainly from um, far, the far parts of Europe, not where we would generally get our information from, I realized that these guys are publishing reams and reams of data in support of their findings and they're demonstrating beautiful results in treating illnesses with various techniques. So one of the treatment tools I use is known as ozone therapy. All right. Not very widely used here in the Western world, but um, it's almost, <laughs> almost on every doctor's uh, table in Italy or in Germany. And I tend to think that these two countries are one of the forerunners, if not the most um, the, the premier forerunners of ozone therapy and other therapies in, um, in the world. 
and the, the level of data that they're able to publish to support what they're recommending as treatments. I mean, they even had a, a whole declaration done. There's a declaration on ozone known as the Madrid Declaration, which is this thick compendium of applications for how ozone is to be used, how it is not to be used, safe doses, concentrations, that kind of thing. And so I was privileged to train with some of the top guys in, in these areas. And the more I train with one, is the more they say, hey, have you done, have you met this, this person working out of this state or this country? You should probably fly and train with them as well. And the more I do that is the more my eyes have been opened to the possibilities for proven, safe, and effective treatments for a variety of illnesses. Mm -hmm. So one of my other questions was about the other types of treatments that you offer and why yes. you choose to specialize in these. <laughs> so I don't know if I could say that any of this was a choice. It's something that I just kept stumbling into. So I, one of the most recent things I have been able to pioneer is some work in uh, treating women with period pain and endometriosis. And you can just imagine the devastating impact that that has had on so many of our women locally and across the world. Um, the treatment options that now exist are, are limited in their scope, especially for women of reproductive age, young women who still are desirous of becoming pregnant. And whilst I was training with a doctor from Germany, he taught me a technique that has been used for decades, which involves a few simple injections under the skin in specific areas around the body to help the body to start functioning well again in, in the region of the pelvis, which is where a lot of women experience pain. And um, again, I trained with another doctor from another country who taught me his perspective on the same treatment. And over the years, I started to realize a pattern that when I was able to combine the two perspectives from these different doctors, I realized that I was getting a better outcome for my women. So I started off with using, using it just for friends and acquaintances who said, hey, you know, I struggle with this thing. Do you have anything that can help? And I said, sure. And over time, I began to realize, but well, wait, this thing is really, really helping. Mm -hmm. So I made it available to a wider cross-section of women. And um, we, have, we have been having tremendous successes. Uh, one of the best ones is a young lady who had stage four endometriosis, which is the most severe form, was in constant pain, even outside of her periods, and had been told that she would never be able to get pregnant. And we did some work with her right at the bedside. And within two menstrual cycles, not only was she completely pain free, but she called to say that she had conceived <laughs> wow so um this journey is not what i initially set out to do because it has spanned way beyond just cancer mm -hmm. um i do a lot of sports medicine as well helping people with injuries athletes with injuries um to heal and the response to the ozone treatment in that regard is always phenomenal and um, i treat also businessmen um, IV vitamin therapy is something that we use a lot here at Teshuva Wellness. So businessmen who are always on the go, probably feeling a little rundown, they pop in for a little bit here in our office in Montego Bay. And we set up an IV on them, inject the vitamins and minerals via the drip rather than waiting on it to be absorbed by the intestines. And guess what they go and do right after? <laughs> go right back to work and... <laughs> soak up mm. a little bit more stress but with that much more energy so it's beautiful to see that's what I wanted to ask just as you were completing your your sentence there what exactly does IV um, um, vitamin, vitamin treatment help me to do yes well when the body is under stress ironically for reasons that I don't quite understand yet we tend to waste or lose more vitamins than when we're at rest Mm -hmm. So um, as a result, everything becomes that much more harder to do because you are you're running on less vitamins and the more the more you become stressed is the more vitamins you lose, which then makes you even more stressed. So to break that cycle, rather than waiting on you to pop a multivitamin by mouth and wait on it to be absorbed, wait on it to reach the cells where it's needed, we just inject the vitamins right into the bloodstream. They rush through the bloodstream to the air where they're needed most, and you get an almost instantaneous effect of their utilization and, of course, the energy 
that most people are looking for. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about where you grew up and how this shaped your path. What was life like for you as a child? <laughs> well, um, it's easy to guess. I'm sure that I grew up as the son of a teacher. My mom was a teacher. And uh, I attended a Meadowbrook Preparatory School in Kingston. My mom taught at the high school next door. Mm -hmm. And so it was a matter of being dropped off at school in the mornings and being picked up shortly thereafter um, by my mom who worked next door. Eventually, she actually taught at my school as well, which was a little awkward. <laughs> How <laughs> so? Yeah, well, you can just imagine you have to be on your best behavior because mm -hmm. your mom is a teacher at the school. And for a variety of reasons, you need to be careful that you don't get into trouble. <laughs> so you were a little goody goody growing up then. You were forced well, to be. I, I would say it was in, it was unavoidable. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, notwithstanding, I, I managed to do more than just academics. I, I played a lot of football growing up. Um, certainly in those prep school years, represented my school. Um, did schools challenge quiz when in the early years when prep schools schools challenge quiz was a thing did a lot mm -hmm. of spelling b and, and then went on to campion where i did table tennis um tried out for a little bit of cricket but that didn't work out <laughs> and um yeah i think i had a i think i had a pretty rounded uh, yeah. upbringing did yeah. a lot of music music is my other passion and I've been doing, I've been playing the keyboard and piano since age, probably age five. And I still am. So that helps to keep me balanced. And I really enjoy music. So your upbringing had a great impact on the path that you chose, would you say? So I'm the first doctor in my family. So um, there was no precedent that I can think of. But certainly, uh, I think that was probably the exact reason why I worked so hard to try and achieve because it had never been done. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the beautiful thing is that coming right behind me was my sister who, for every standard that I could set, she just obliterated it. it by doing way better. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that's, that's kind of funny. So she's a doctor as well and she's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that you felt like giving up on your chosen path? Like, you know, did you ever get overwhelmed? Tell me about, you know, that experience, if any, and, and, and how, how did you overcome this? Yeah, so it's interesting. I, I think one of the quotes, I can't remember it quite well, one of the quotes that inspires me is that the person who you see who is successful is just a person who has failed the most. Uh -huh. And I think we always wait until we're successful to then start giving mentorship to others. And so as a result people who are receiving mentorship usually only see you when you are successful. And no matter how you try to describe the times when it was difficult, it seems, it seems minor to them in comparison to the looming success that you've clearly had. So um, yes, there have been times when it has become overwhelming, especially um, leaving the hospital as I did in 2016 I walked away from a promising, lucrative career at the hospital and began to step out in this unknown field of integrative oncology to try and embrace some of what I was learning. That was a difficult step because it meant um, a less predictable income, for example, <laughs> not mm -hmm. being too sure what each month would hold. It meant becoming an entrepreneur, um, being responsible for your own marketing, your own um, payroll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything just kind of hinges on you. Um, I had the benefit of having a, a beautiful wife who is also a registered nurse, uh, Nisha, who has stood by me through all of this. Um, and so we, we are the founders and directors of Teshuva Wellness. And so we have each other to lean on, but it has not been without its challenges. And I want to encourage anyone there um, on listening this evening or morning, whenever you're listening to this, um, to consider the fact that there will be challenges around, along the way, there will be failures, there will be times when you feel like giving up, but um, you know, the ability to bounce back and to be resilient in the face of challenges is exactly what, for me, being a Christian is about, and certainly for being an entrepreneur, that's, there's no way you're going to make it without that resilience. 
I want to ask you a little um, about your be belief. But before yeah. I get to that, let me ask, because you've touched on one of the questions that I have. You're a doctor, but you're also an entrepreneur. You're a businessman. And yes. people tend not to see doctors in their private practices as business people. Yes. So what are some of the lessons that you had to learn quickly as you grew as a businessman? Yeah. So um, the beautiful thing about the way I run my business is I know it's easy for, for people to say, boy, doctors just do this thing for the money. So one of the first lessons mm -hmm. I learned was having somebody that you can trust to deal with the accounting and the invoicing and all of that. In this case, it was easy because my wife was here. So I asked her to just, we just divided that responsibility so I don't handle anything to do with money as it relates to our office. So anybody who has a question about the price or the price is too high or I need a payment plan, it doesn't have to interfere with my management for them. So I just say, hey, this is what you need to get better. Go and discuss it with the billing officers and let them tell you what your bills are. So that was one quick lesson. The other thing is, um, is, is how to remain as a person of integrity, which is not easy all the time. So, for example, if somebody comes into the office, because people do a lot of reading across Google and Facebook, and they'll come in and say, hey, I've heard about this, uh, this treatment that you guys offer, and I think I need it. Uh, I'm willing to pay whatever you want <laughs> for, to, for you to give it to me. And, of course, as a businessman, you say, okay, perfect. Here's somebody, perfect clients. They already know what they want. They have the money. They're ready to go. But as a doctor, I have to then say, well, does this person really need this treatment? And so I step on the brakes a little bit and I say, hey, do you mind if we sit and talk a bit? And let's see if this is really for you. It may be that there's something else that you need or you may not need anything at all. And so those are the two main lessons I've had to use uh, or principles I've used to guide me through this entrepreneurial journey. Interesting. We're taking a break now to hear from our sponsors. <laughs> Searching for a one-stop solution to all your facilities maintenance needs? Visit Manpoint Maintenance Services Sales and Distribution Center. We stock a wide range of COVID-19 washroom cleaning and other supplies, gardening tools, chemicals, and more. Our experts are always ready to give you the best advice. Manpoint Maintenance Services Sales and Distribution Center, 14 Collins Green Avenue, Kingston, Freeport Commercial Center, Montego Bay, and 33 Ward Avenue, Mandeville. Visit or call us today, 876-920-47215. Grace has been part of some special moments over the years, helping to make them, well, more memorable, even when they're a little bit unexpected. And with 100 years of great taste behind us, you can be sure we'll be making even more moments for 100 years to come. Grace, taste that moves you. John John, I know you in there. I want no wedding light to come back. I know Pinky this time. Akeisha. Akeisha, just like me tell Pinky. Give GPS your number and then we'll send your text with them things there. So you can't stop, knock my door. What do you mean? DM or call JPS and tell them to add your phone number to your account and you will know everything all the time. You know for ask. Send your current contact information and always be in the know. Visit jpsgo.com for more info. All right, Dr. Williams, thank you again for sharing your story with us. So back to your belief, you mentioned several times that you're a Christian and I wanted to ask two questions with regards to that. In terms of your belief in regenerative, um, the body's ability to regenerate and to heal itself how yes. does that influence what you do and yes. then we can talk about how your belief as a christian influences um what you do yeah so in hebrews 4 verse 12 the bible tells us that the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to dividing of soul and spirit and of the joint and of the marrow and is a discern of the thoughts and intentions of the heart and that verse stands out for me as a part of my practice, because as Christians, we tend to say, oh, yes, man, the word of God is powerful and you have to be careful of me and I have my Bible in my pocket. Mm -hmm. But I, I look at that verse a little differently. What I believe it's really trying to tell us is that the most powerful force on, on the face of the earth right now is the word of God. It's more powerful than nuclear power. 
which is what we currently consider to be really advanced technology. And even then, what the Bible is trying to tell us is the, the combination or the interplay between the body, the soul, and the spirit mm-hmm. is so close that the only thing that can really separate them is the most powerful power on earth. So what that means is the scientists were able to break down atoms to the level of electrons and protons and so on, and even deeper now, are still not able to separate the body, soul, and spirit for separate examination. And what that tells me then is if somebody comes in with a physical illness and is only treated with physical treatments, there's a strong possibility that that person would not get well. And so as a part of our practice at Teshuva Wellness, we insist that every patient has to have, well, they start off with a one-hour consultation with me. Mm -hmm. And in that time, we spend time praying. uh, We spend time talking about them as a person rather than just their illness. And by the time we're done, I usually, we both, myself and the patient, usually have a better idea of what may be bothering them and causing them to feel unwell. Right. We, we lean very heavily on prayer, forgiveness, and uh, emotional counseling, just as much as we lean on all these fancy physical innovations I've learned across the world. Mm-hmm. So your belief in the body's ability to regenerate and to heal itself. Yes. How does that, you know, interplay in in what you do? Yeah. So, I mean, we were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. There's no debate in that. And my my mantra is that science can only discover what God has already stated. Mm -hmm. And so it would be unwise for me as a scientist or or a medical doctor for, for the current label to start to think that I know more than what God has already discovered. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and therefore, the fundamental truth has to remain that God built us with the ability to heal ourselves. And so if we are not healing from something, it's, it's important for us to check and see what it is that is causing the body to get stuck, as it were, in a state of dis-ease, rather than treating this disease as, as this um, entity on its own. So for example, people will say, Um, you know, I'm fighting cancer. Um, This cancer has come upon me and I'm rejecting it. But no, the truth is that your body, for whatever reason, has started to form cancer because it wasn't able to heal from whatever had triggered it in the first place. So let's take a step back. Rather than fighting cancer or fighting whatever it is you're facing, let's try and work alongside the body to identify the obstacles that it's facing, the challenges, and to help it to overcome them. And then I just turn everything over to the body to do the cleanup work. Mm. So so I would say I estimate for each patient, I probably do uh, 25% of the work. (laughs) And then their body does the other 75. But that 25 involves finding exactly what it is that triggered this person to become ill. Is this field for everyone, having done it for the number of years that you've done it? Um, you know, what would you advise? <laughs> well, the medical field is certainly one that people who are naturally caring and have the aptitude intellectually for it, certainly I'd recommend that you do it. Oncology is another layer to that, which is treating cancer patients in general. Um, I think somebody who does that has to have the ability to remain objective in the face of difficult situations um, because the patients are often going to depend on you to help them, not just with the illness, but with the emotions that come with it. And as human beings, we weren't built to be able to carry our emotions as well as others. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky dynamic to be an oncologist. And I would say it's even trickier to be an integrative oncologist because then now you have to charter, you have to go into an uncharted territory, as it were to find out about things that are still in their innovative stage, things that may not necessarily have um, clear. (laughs) Well, one of the things I'll say is that most of the treatments I do have no side effects, for example. Mm -hmm. And people are so used to hearing about side effects that when you say to them, I'm sorry, this treatment doesn't have any, they think that you're lying. (laughs) So That's interesting. Yeah, when you tell them you're treating them with ozone, okay, what's ozone? Okay, that's oxygen. 
okay, so what are the side effects? And you say, well, it's oxygen. So it's, it's really difficult for you to have side effects. And then there's this long pause because everybody's used to even, you know, a pill that you take for a headache having potential side effects. And so it becomes a journey, therefore, of, of a pioneer rather than um, walking through an established framework that somebody else has already created. Right, right. You know, the pioneering life is never easy. Mm. I wanted wanted to ask as well, did you find that um, people in Jamaica are skeptic of your type of medicine and and treatment offerings? You know, was this a challenge for you? So actually, no. Um, I think Jamaicans, I... I'm a very patriotic person. I need to establish that. And so everywhere I go in the world, I talk very well and highly of Jamaica and Jamaicans. And the truth is, um, I think Jamaicans have always been uh, in tune with their bodies and with how our bodies interact with the plants and the nature around us. I'll give you a good example. I was in San Diego, California in 2015. I was waiting to hear a well-decorated and highly accomplished professor speak Everybody kind of went quiet as he took the podium. (laughs) He got up and said, the topic of today's presentation is going to be how to help patients who are going through cancer and are doing chemotherapy or whatever it is that's causing them to feel nauseous. So everybody waited for a little bit. And what is he going to say now? He said, my studies have... He said something about mint tea. He he said ginger (laughs) tea and peppermint tea. (laughs) So and everybody in the room applauded loudly and... Uh, my wife and I were there. We were the only ones from Jamaica. We looked at each other like, is this a joke? Are we are we on a reality show or something? <laughs> because mint tea and, and peppermint and ginger tea are, you know, staples of the Jamaican diet. But uh, it just goes to show you that when you have high-powered funding to be able to do research on things and get it published, you're naturally going to have the loudest voice. Mm -hmm. so back to your question about whether jamaicans are skeptical no we are actually a very wise set of people i've always maintained that i also think that jamaica has the best chance of the world to influence the cancer landscape cancer treatment landscape in a positive way because as you may already know the majority of the compounds um, derived from natural herbs that are being studied uh, the mm-hmm. majority of them are found not just in Jamaica, but I think over 2,000 of them are found just in Portland alone. Interesting. So, so if we begin to take this thing seriously and start to look at doing our own research and, and embracing what we already know to be true about the body and how it heals, we have the potential to really change the landscape for generations to come. Very interesting. We have a, a, a crisis of diabetes and high blood pressure. Mm. What would you advise? Uh, <laughs> so it's an easy answer. There's no trick there. It goes back to the same thing. I think our epidemic of, uh, I use the word epidemic um, advisedly, of diabetes and hypertension is fundamentally due to the change in, in, in our, our, our everyday diets. And I know successive administrations have tried to influence our culture around what we eat. But um, I, the amount of processed foods that we consume as a people is just unbelievable. I now live in Montego Bay and Hanover, or live in Montego Bay, work in Hanover. And it's amazing to see breadfruits falling off the tree, natural, other natural foods falling on the ground and spoiling. But the lines to some of our fast food restaurants are at times one hour long, two hour long. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that picture alone tells you why we're invariably going to have more of those chronic um, lifestyle diseases. Interesting. So we need to really look seriously at yep. making use of all the natural things that we have here that yep. we're so blessed with as a people and as a country. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Williams. It has been an interesting conversation. I (laughs) truly enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. So Teshuva Wellness, we're located in Montego Bay, Jamaica, beautiful Montego Bay. You can call us at 876-787-8197. Or the easiest way is to just go to our website, www.teshuvawellnessja.com. You can learn a lot more about what we do or approach. And you can even book your first consultation 
via the website. So it should make it easier for you. And I want to encourage all the Jamaicans listening, continue to believe in the power of natural treatment and embrace the ability to heal yourselves. Impact in Jamaica is powered by the Philip and Christine Gore Family Foundation, Manpower and Maintenance Services Limited, the Jamaica Public Service Company, Red Stripe, Kyramed, and Proven Investments Limited. If you or anyone you know is involved with projects and activities that excite, motivate, and encourage, send us an email to impactingjamaica at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Do join us again for another in the series on Google Podcast, Audible, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and Stitcher. You can also visit us at impactingjamaica.com.